Hello, my name is Stefana and together with my colleague Alessandro, it is a pleasure to be presenting our work on the light vault. We are speaking today on behalf of a large team that includes myself and Alahan from the Create Lab Princeton, Alessandro Beghini, Masaki Miki and Samantha Walker representing SLM and Edward Brun and Sigrid Adriensen from the Form Finding Lab Princeton. The light bulb is a glass brick structure assembled with cooperating robots without additional formwork or support. But beyond this, the project is a collaboration between academia and practice, between architects and engineers, that is aimed at exploring and pushing the limits of robotic assembly for complex masonry structures. The goal of the paper that we are presenting today is to showcase how a collaborative, integrative design process that combines structure and fabrication can successfully negotiate between contrasting constraints and requirements. In order to develop such a design approach, we needed to address a multitude of points in a hybrid process that combined physical prototyping and computational design iterations. These included structural form finding, robotic setup and reach, material tests and connections, structural analysis of in-construction steps, pattern definition, sequencing, and path planning, to name a few. In our talk today, we will focus on the interactions between structural design and robotic fabrication and the methods required to ensure feasibility, both in terms of construction and structure. For a number of years, we have had traveling exhibitions showcasing the research work conducted at the SOM by the Structural Group. These exhibitions became also an opportunity to display some of the latest technologies in design and construction as shown in some of these images. The robotic glass fall represents the latest example of design showcasing futuristic construction technologies. There's a bit of history behind our research in vaults. We have been collaborating with the Timbrel Vault Workshop and the University of Alcalá in Madrid for a number of years. Our collaboration resulted in the Timbrel Vault showcased at the Madrid exhibit in 2019. Here is a picture of it. Timbrel vaults are very efficient shell structures that have the additional benefit of being self-supporting as they're built and can be constructed without formwork. Based on the previous experience with the Timbrel vault, we set some objectives uh, for ourselves to follow in the glass vault design. First, we wanted the construction to be automated, so we thought about using robots. The second objective was to build a vault without formwork, but also without the visual guides that were used by the masons in the Timbrel vault construction. We also wanted to use standard bricks of one size and shape without custom shapes. Finally, we were looking for a structurally well-behaving shell that would be primarily in compression under gravity loads. So we used a form finding based on the Ari stress function. In the assembly approach, we were inspired by ancient barrel vault techniques from the Byzantine era. We ended up using a construction approach similar to the one to the right, which relied on inclined courses of bricks layered against the vertical end wall to construct the vault without formwork. Essentially, the form is constructed as a series of arches leaning against each other as you move away from the vertical wall. This approach guarantees stability throughout the construction process at each step of the assembly. The form finding process utilizes the Aristotle's function approach and it requires the definition of states of self-stress satisfying certain requirements. Each state of self-stress defines a planar, self-equilibrated system of forces in the shell, which is studied using graphic statics. The images on the left show the form diagram and the force diagram used for the glass vault. After the definition of the form and force diagram, the Aris stress function can be calculated and the three-dimensional form of the vault is derived from that function. With the help of the Technical University of Delft uh, Glass and Transparency Research Group, we also compare the advantages and disadvantages of mechanical and adhesive connections. Dry assembly interlocking glass components would allow the structure to be assembled and disassembled without any joint material. However, to achieve a vault with a complex geometry, several special glass pieces would need to be cast. This was not economically feasible and it was not in line with the intent of using standardized components. We settled on using a rigid epoxy in combination with acrylic pieces for the larger gaps. You can see the final resolution on the right. After defining the form for the vault, we studied various tessellation patterns for the brick placement. 
We ultimately selected the herringbone pattern, which allowed the braids to naturally lock themselves in place and ensure higher structural stability. To numerically study the equilibrium of the glass vault during all phases of construction, we adopted an iterative procedure based on the limit state analysis and the discrete element method. This analysis allows us to study the stability of the vault at each stage of construction. The image on the left shows the construction sequence of the central arch of the vault, and the image on the right shows a few steps of the sequence analyzed in 3 deck. With regards to construction, bricklaying is one of the first processes that was targeted for automation ever since the 1960s. But research in the field moved quickly beyond simple automation towards using robots for spatial differentiation and placement precision. However, we think that there's much higher potential in robotic technology beyond differentiation when applied to spanning structures. Particularly masonry construction requires sturdy support structures or formwork to achieve complex geometries and ensure stability during construction. Which is why we adopted a cooperative robotic assembly strategy for the formwork free construction of the vault in which one robot acts as a support while the other one places a new brick. Instead of working through individual design options and sending those around from team to team, we specifically used the robotic setup to identify and visualize the design space that spans between them and the logical construction sequence, which ended up as follows. First, the two robots cooperatively build a central arch that serves as a backbone of the vault. Afterwards, each of the robots continues the assembly individually on each side of the arch while still serving as support by counteracting the forces applied to the arch from the opposite side. As mentioned, the interlocking herringbone pattern helped a lot with in-construction stability. However, in order to map the pattern to the double curvature of the vault, we had to introduce so-called reset lines at which the bricks are cut into half bricks and shifted to minimize the gaps between them. These reset lines did not go through the entire section of the vault, but were only needed locally in four points, which ensured the structural integrity of the vault. Due to the connection type, keeping the gaps to an absolute minimum was a must. So we adjusted the placement and orientation of each brick by deferring from the normal vector orientation, but instead aligning the end side center points of each brick with the initial surface and rotating them around the longitudinal axis as needed. The placement sequence had a central role in ensuring stability both locally and globally. The construction was divided in 12 steps, from the central arch to fold construction, in which the robots either worked together or supported each other on opposite sides of the central axis. On a local level, the sequence had to maximize stability during construction, so it followed a stepwise logic inspired by the leaning arches of the historic barrel vault construction. However, the left and right side of the vault follow different logics and that is a result of the lack of symmetry of the herringbone pattern. All of the mentioned processes were developed through physical testing, from material connection tests to robotic reach, path planning and sequencing. We ultimately built eight prototypes in three locations with three robotic setups, finalizing with the construction of the full-scale glass vault. I will now let the video speak to these prototypes and the final fabrication. Enjoy! Thank you. 
The constant feedback between physical testing and design allowed us to change, adapt, and improve continuously to make up for the different sites, robotic setups, and constraints. Whether it was sequence, pathing, or connection material, these adjustments were crucial to the success of the project. Many of the prototypes that we made were a result of the failures we encountered along the way, which led us to the further development of the research. We learned how crucial the temporal aspect of construction sequence is, particularly when working with heavy materials. This is an analysis that shows what happens in our central arch. And we are currently investigating new strategies for in-construction analysis and multi-robotic support during assembly. We are also continuing the collaboration between SOM, the Form Finding Lab, and the CREATE Lab in the Global Collaborative Network here at Princeton and look forward to new challenges in the field. And at this point, we would like to thank all of our collaborators and team members without which this project would not have happened. Thank you very much.